Hello and welcome to Fierce. This program celebrates the diversity of LGBTIQ identities and perspectives. Fierce is produced in Bundjalan country at 2NCR Lismore and can also be heard on podcast at fiercefm.podbean.com and in New Zealand on Fresh FM as well as all over Australia through the Community Radio Network. I want to honour the traditional owners of the lands where you are living. They took care of these lands for thousands and thousands of years and then shared this land with us at great cost to their own lives. I want to thank them for the care they have given and continue to give, to sit on the earth, listen and care for country. I also want to thank the fairies and crones who came before us in history to fight for our human right to love fiercely. We're chatting to Andy Amore who creates chest binders. Whereabouts are you in country Victoria? I'm in East Gippsland in a little place called Kalimna, which is um, an indigenous word that means beautiful. I make binders for full gender spectrum, so non-binary people, trans men, even occasionally like a trans person might need one for whatever reason, and drag kings as well. You're making gender dysphoria into gender euphoria. Yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That came out of a need, I guess, for yourself. I've heard about how using tape and bandages can break ribs, never mind hurt to take off. Yeah, there's a lot of unsafe binding methods that sadly sometimes people end up resorting to. I started wearing binders myself roughly about six years ago when I first started socially transitioning. There were a few binders on the market that they were really hard to get, they were expensive and they were terribly, terribly uncomfortable. So they were basically like torture devices. After trying out a few different binders, I decided to have a go at making one myself. My mum's a dressmaker, so when I finally came out to my family, I asked her if she could help with making the first prototype, eliminating some of the things that were really uncomfortable at the binders I'd tried and obviously trialled them out on myself for quite a while before I decided to start making them for other people, just friends or whatever. And then I started actually selling them, doing custom made ones around early 2018. They've been really popular and they sort of told their friends and then set up an Instagram for the things I've been making and really took off really quickly. Came to a point where there's a lot of people requesting binders from me and I just cannot custom make every single one for every single person. So I started developing the full size range of binders, working towards having them professionally pattern made so that they can be manufactured so that I could set up an online store. I've been making them myself this whole time on domestic machines, not industrial equipment. And every person that I've sold a binder to has literally like come to my home and been fitted, which is not something you can do for, you know, a large amount of people over a, a, a wide distance. So hence why I've been trying to work towards starting up an online store. Were they made of cotton or? So they're a compression garment, a binding panel on the front, and then like a stretch fabric over the rest of the binder fitted to the body. A really high quality lycra that's made from recycled nylon. I've been testing out this fabric, my first binder that I made for myself, which was over five years ago and being worn quite a lot over that time is still holding up really well in comparison to binders available on the market which usually wear out in only like a few months of being worn it's sustainable so which is important to me as well a garment that's comfortable affordable accessible as well as not damaging the environment and a lot more fun and easy to put on than bandages yeah 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 definitely i designed them to be sensory friendly for people with sensory processing difficulties such as like i myself i'm on the autism spectrum so that was a really big thing for me having a binder that was comfortable enough that i could actually wear it for more than an hour a lot of really good feedback as well from other people who've been wearing my binders there is some trauma in the need for binders Predominantly, they're worn by people who have some level of body dysphoria, whether that's associated with gender dysphoria or not, like drag performers wear them, lots of people in the queer community, but predominantly they're trans mass people, trans men and non-binary people that wear them. Flattening the curve <laughs> is the idea <laughs> behind binding <laughs> 
<laughs> There's yes. a little COVID-19 pun in there for you. So the idea originally was that I would have them manufactured in Melbourne. So I was at the stage that the manufacturer had my patterns, I had my fabric and everything ready to make my first samples and the new restrictions went into place and my manufacturer had to close their doors. And so I sort of had to very quickly make some decisions and problem solve, leave all of that in their hands and wait, you know, an indefinite period of time, which could be six months to get my first samples made. So I just decided to have them sent back to me and I started looking into actually doing the manufacturing myself, buying all the professional industrial machines and everything I need for the whole production process is quite expensive. Decided to try and raise some funds with my crowdfund. It's called A More Binders Needs Your Help. Find me on Instagram or Facebook, A More Binders. So that's spelled A-M-O-R, A More. A More, which means love. <laughs> if people would like to support trans owned business, particularly one that has the potential to help a lot more trans people in this country have access to safe and affordable binders, then I guess that would be a good reason to support, which you can do by sharing if you're not in a position to be donating. Do you think you'll ever do music? I mean, you've done visual art, now you're doing no. textiles. I'd love to. If I live another 100 years longer than I will, there'd be so many things I'd love to do in my life, and music is definitely one of them. I can tell you I own a lot of instruments with good intentions to learn to play them. That have never happened. <laughs> Could you introduce the first song? She, Her, Hers um, is the performer's name and the song is called Gender is Boring. She's got a lot of attitude in a good way and I could really relate to a lot of the lyrics even though it's from a trans femme experience. I think any trans person could probably relate to what she sings about. The song is a pretty easy sing along. I bet a lot of you already know it. I never asked anyone to braid my hair I never asked my mom to buy me things that I saw on the TV marketed towards girls I never wanted to wear a dress And I was never obsessed With the color pink or sparkly things Unicorns and fucking fairy wings Said they never really meant that much to me So people started telling me how I was supposed to be Until the people that I love started to say Boys don't act that way Boys don't act that way Boys don't act that way Yeah, you'll get it Little hint for you during the set, I always do things Three times, every time problem I have with gender is that I'm not even sure whether I know what I mean when I say I'm a girl because I feel that way. Boys can wear dresses and makeup, anyone can wear whatever they want. And girls can have short hair and muscles, and that's when I run into trouble. Because if I use two pronouns, well what does that mean? Am I reinforcing a gender binary that I don't believe in, that I don't adhere to? I say I'm a woman, what's that supposed to tell you? Gender doesn't tell you a damn thing about me. Doesn't tell you what I like or how I act, it doesn't tell you how I speak. And the people you love, they don't love you if they say Boys don't act that way. Boys don't act that way. Boys don't act that way. And I think it's time that our culture moves past this fucked up notion of the way we act. Is it imposed binary? Either way we lose. So do what you want, and just how you feel. Don't let anyone tell you gender is real. It's useless, oppressive, and boring. It's worthless and hurtful and stifling. And I think it's time that we put it in its place. Hi, I'm 
Emily Finch. And I'm Janet Marshall. And we, and we love, love Fierce FM. FM. Woo! Hey everyone, my name's Andy. I own a more binders, chess binders for trans and gender diverse people. And you're listening to Fierce FM. A really great program, by the way. Well, you're very easy to a more, Andy Amore, about a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, it was a long time ago. It was probably more than a decade. When you won the Lismore Portrait Prize, yeah. you've always been a cutting-edge artist, creating new work, creating a buzz around you. You've gone through lots of changes since then. That feels like many, many lifetimes ago now. <laughs> I used to live in Lismore once upon a time. My son was conceived there. He's 18 now. Were you comfortable as yourself back then? I wouldn't say I was comfortable in the same way that I am now. Definitely not. I definitely don't fit that typical narrative that the media really love, that whole born in the wrong body type of narrative. That's not a lot of trans people's stories, particularly non-binary people. I feel like I've been through more than one transition basically in my life because I had always been very boyish when I was younger and never really felt like I fit in that mould of what I thought I should be for the gender that I was socially conditioned to be. So I would say I was kind of at the peak of that at that time. I basically went through a transition process to try and be more femme and fit this idea of what I thought I was meant to be. I wouldn't say I was necessarily comfortable with myself, no. I was comfortable with the idea that I fit something that I thought I was meant to be, but it came to a point I didn't even feel like I knew myself at all anymore. When I came to that realisation, I basically went in the other direction and went, no, that's not me, and started learning about what it means to be trans. Like, I'd never even heard of a non-binary person before I was living in Melbourne. I had heard of trans people and I knew trans people. A good friend of mine transitioned to I've known for a really long time and I kind of followed his journey but I never kind of considered myself as being trans because I'd never really heard any other stories like even intersex stories which I relate to a lot because hormonally you could say that I'm intersex my hormones didn't really match up to typical female range I actually was on androgen blockers for about eight years eventually I was like no this isn't me it just kind of felt like a facade you know like I'm I mean, anyone who's done drag would probably, I think I could relate that experience to that because it literally just felt like every day I was going out in drag and I'd get home and I'd be like, take off the makeup and <laughs> just, <you> know, <laughs> until I go out again for the day. That's kind of what it felt like at that time in my life. So now I just feel like I am just myself. I go out the house in what I wear around the house, if you know what I mean? There's no facade and that is just a really freeing experience. I was talking about this with a friend just yesterday that because I was young, I'm so blinkered by being straight, being what I thought I had to be. I didn't even know. Yeah. I was going out watching the band The Angels at the Black Town RSL in Sydney and drinking Black Russians, being a whole different self. And I used to see this band The Angels all the time and I'd be eyeballing their bass player the whole gig and he'd look at me as well. He'd give me a lot of eye time, you know what I mean? But I knew I was hot for him, but I really had no idea. I was really innocent. I didn't know that yeah. I was attracted to him, sex with him. Yeah, I tried to convince myself, I suppose you could say, that I was basically cishet for a long time, but I never was. And I could never convince myself of that, even if I could everyone else. So I can relate to that. And I think that's why it's really really important more people share their stories particularly that young people are able to connect with and meet other gender diverse and queer people i know for myself if i had never had that community and found that community i would just be a very sad person still like trying to be something that i'm not and who knows like how long i would have just lived like that for it's not a quality of life did you play the gender roles? Did you discover anything, um, learn anything? Yeah, I learned a lot about gender roles while I was trying to conform to them. Um, <laughs> and I learned that they really suck on so many levels. I've always felt like my gender is very fluid. 
it's never been like a fixed thing. Like it's something I've been socialized to behave in certain ways and have certain likes and interests. When I was trying to conform to the idea of being a woman, which I never really fit any of those roles that I tried to fit into for that. So I denied a lot of things about myself and tried to hide a lot of things about myself or, you know, just be something I wasn't. And then I kind of almost went in the other direction, I guess, when I first started socially transitioning, I was like, oh, maybe I'm a man. And like, yeah, that makes more sense. Ended up denying a lot of things that were actual things that associated with this idea of femininity and everything like that and kind of rejected all of that and went the complete other direction and realized that that wasn't really me either. And I actually really liked some of those things about myself that I was like trying to deny and reject. So I suppose, you know, a lot of trans people go for a similar process probably. And some do end up feeling, yep, they're binary and that fits them, but that's not something that ever fit for me and ever will. So I'm pretty comfortable now with actually identify as agender. So I just don't feel any kind of prescribed idea of what gender is. I don't really relate to the whole concept of it at all, really, in general. Not every trans person feels that way. For some trans people, like their binary identity is really important to them. So I guess that's why, you know, the... Um, trans and gender diverse communities why we have the word diverse because gender is a very diverse experience the freedom you feel to be yourself now how would you describe that that word you used earlier gender euphoria i guess that euphoria feeling for a lot of trans people is like when they first i guess start expressing themselves in a way that matches their internal feelings around gender and people feel euphoria around that or like feeling like their body matches up with how they view themselves and that kind of thing can create euphoria for people and I suppose I've experienced that in some ways during my like transition experience I guess and there's always intersections in the queer and trans community and intersections with disability is one of those and so I'm autistic part of me being at the place where I am with myself has also been accepting that part of myself as well because Just like um, trans people and queer people, I mean, the terminology that we use in the autism community is masking, which I suppose is a similar thing that a lot of queer and trans people sadly have to do before they're able to come out as themselves, is like masking those parts of themselves. And so as an autistic person, that's also something I've had to do and kind of accepting those part of myself as well has been a huge as well as my gender identity not feeling like I have to mask my autism as much is kind of similar to not feeling like I have to mask how I express and feel about my gender I suppose I'm not sure how to describe that but I suppose most of my life I've tried to like fit into that this normative, heteronormative ideas of what I should be and as well as ableist ideas of what I should be. So since like I've kind of accepted those things about myself and gone, yeah, you know what? No, I don't have to be those things for anybody, for people to accept me for who I am. So that I suppose is just I don't know, the best way to describe it is just having a massive weight lifted. I'd been carrying for a very long time. Do you want to talk about family? Because when you transition, (laughs) everyone around you transitions as well. Uh, It can be a complex journey for a lot of people when they transition or even come out to their family just being queer or, you know, that kind of thing. Some people have a bit of an easier road than others. It wasn't a particularly easy road for me, but, you know comparatively it could have been worse but you know yeah it was tough and I ended up cutting off from my family for quite a while I didn't talk to my mum for a whole entire year I have a very complex relationship with my family but in the end I came out to my family about five years ago I think they're a lot better now than they were at the beginning and for the most part people at least try to use the right pronouns um, they all call me by my name, you know, that I have now. 
for anyone who's listening who's at that stage in their journey where having a difficult time with their family, like, you know, it often does get better. So it just can take time. Imagine that you were giving advice to yourself 20 years ago. Oh, God. <laughs> who you were 20 years, years ago. ago. Oh, God. I don't think my younger self would like anything my older self would be telling me, to be frank. <laughs> I'd be just like, who are you, you old dick, like, telling me this? I wouldn't listen, probably. I don't know, you know, who knows? Maybe I, I'd be like, wow, what? I, I, I don't know. I don't think younger me would want to hear a bar of what I'd have to say <laughs> to myself. I'd be like, don't take that acid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> would you? I don't know if I would. I really don't know what I would say, to be honest, because you can look back and go, yeah, that wasn't a great choice I made then and that had all these negative consequences. But then at the same time, you know, the butterfly effect, I think about that a lot and I think about how things in my life would be really different if I hadn't had negative experiences and, you know, unpleasant experiences and, you know, experienced a lot of adversity. I'd be a totally different person and maybe I would be a less empathetic and compassionate person if I hadn't experienced that. It changes your perspective on a lot of things, helps you relate better to other people who are experiencing adversity and are less privileged than yourself. Maybe I'd pat myself on the back and go, it'll be all right. Just you're going to go for some fucking shit, but it'll come out in the end and it'll all be all right. That's probably what I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do you want to introduce that song? Yeah, the second song I chose is by singer-songwriter called Jake Edwards. It's called You Can't Tell Me and then in brackets, I'm Not a Man. Thank you, Andy. Oh, Thank yeah. you so, so much. <laughs> okay, see you. Stage, but I refuse to be told exactly what to do. 
Fuck the rules and fuck the lines I'm not someone you can't Cause divide. I'm a man Yeah And more than you Will ever be I'm a man Yes I am And more than you Will ever see Cause I'm a man Hey guys, this is Ray Isaac, the DJ from Madonna Bar, and you're listening to the amazing Fierce FM. Hi, I'm comedian Jay McBride, and I'm transgender. Today I want to talk to some people about bathroom issues. You see, a lot of states are trying to pass these laws that tell transgender people that they have to use the bathroom that corresponds to their birth sex, which means that I would have to use the men's room. And I think that's kind of just silly. You see, unlike most lawmakers, I don't spend a lot of time in men's restrooms. You see, I just go to the women's room, I pee and get out. You know, I haven't had a problem with that. I haven't had a single complaint. So what's the big deal? But isn't there a chance a transgender person could attack a woman in the bathroom? You know, they seem to think so, but there has never been a reported incident of that happening Ever? Huh. Hey girl, come here often. Only if those conservative lawmakers have their way. Oh, and by the way, if those laws do get passed, Jake would have to use the ladies' room. Don't we have bigger problems to deal with? We just need to pee. We just need to pee. Thank you for listening to Fierce. Fierce. This program celebrates the diversity of LGBTIQ identities and perspectives. Fierce is produced in Bundjalung country at 2NCR Lismore and can also be heard on podcast at fiercefm.podbean.com and in New Zealand on Fresh FM as well as all over Australia through the Community Radio Network. Fierce, Fierce FM on Spotify.